Hello and welcome. It's easier to mention a few things here before we begin, as once we start the game, the game timer will continuously run, even during codec calls and conversations. So, to achieve big boss rank, we need to beat the game under these conditions. I've included codec calls and even sought out extra conversations that add character to the playthrough for a more complete story experience. With that said, we can start Operation Intrude N313, Solid Snake's first mission as the newest member of Elite Special Forces Unit Foxhound. Time to infiltrate. The fundamentals of stealth are avoidance, deception, and punching. We'll be doing a lot of punching this run. It helps us pass guards and disrupt patrol timings, allowing us to run through areas quickly without waiting around. Similar to a bullet hell game, only the area around Snake's feet is the detection zone, not the full sprite, which will explain why we can seemingly be in full view of an enemy and avoid triggering the alert phase. Now we have card 1 and the gas mask, we can head to the second floor. It's a straightforward run north to reach the elevator. We need to wait for the guard shift to end. Kyle Schneider will give you a lot of guidance, helpful to a first-time player. He's easily missed thanks to Big Boss's overriding radio call here. Remember Kyle when it gets tough on 120.79. He's an important contact. That is the only time we'll hear from Kyle this run, thanks to the in-game timer. But we will remember you, Kyle. Put the gas mask on before entering the next room. Because key cards need to be equipped in the gas room to leave it, it means we have to take damage. Force damage doesn't end no damage runs, but later on there are areas where you can avoid damage, but it's so finely specific that to achieve it all in one single segment would be next to impossible. Which is why I settled on just doing the bosses no damage for this Metal Gear. Guess what happens if that thing hits Snake? Line yourself up against the wall when passing these guards. We're just out of their line of sight by doing so. And here, space out two punches to disrupt this guard's patrol. No more than two punches or you will kill him and you'll fail Big Boss rank. Punch the guard on the way out, hug the bottom of the wall, and then run once the camera is out of the way. There are many moving pieces in this room, and while the routines are exact, miss one beat and it's alert time. Nice to know that Grey Fox is alive and unharmed. We enter this door on the absolute edge, narrowly avoiding the camera patrol. This is extremely valuable time save.
Don't forget the gas mask before entering the gas room. It will save you taking damage than if you were to change it once inside. On Big Boss Rank, taking too much minor damage before the upcoming live fire training room will be fatal. We come down with card 2 to save this hostage. We've been saving them en route, and soon I'll explain why this is essential, outside of Snake being a legend. I'm going to come clean, I messed up this next room. No surprises, we're supposed to wait for the bullets to pass before running out of cover. But on this particular recording, I just ran straight into the bullets, and honestly, I'm lucky I made it out alive. The run to the grenade launcher is safe, the exit is usually where the damage happens. Take bullet damage going in, and it's very unlikely you're coming out. I deliberately hug the guard so Snake takes lesser contact damage, and fortunately the guard decides to follow us. The iframes during the recovery window allow us to dodge the bullet damage that would have otherwise killed Snake. Our unique no ration route requires us to pick up the cardboard box. This is normally skipped over in speedruns and big boss runs, so it made me very happy that we have a vital use for the box in this playthrough. Hostages give Snake valuable tips, such as this resistance contact, Diane. We'll give her a call. As you've seen, over the course of the game, we'll be saving hostages. Every five hostages, our rank will increase, giving us a boost in health and status. We need these hostages. Missing even one en route will ruin our playthrough. Enter the next room at the left edge, so we can beeline the door using card 2. Take too long and the camera will spot us. With our fifth hostage saved, we rank up and get a much needed health boost. And we've almost located Grey Fox, Foxhound's finest. The submachine gun is a necessary pickup, as it is a boss killer, especially on a speedrun. Grey Fox is one of my all-time favourite characters, but this is all we see of this legend for now. Shotmaker is the first boss ever in the Metal Gear series. We have to use what we recently learned and punch open the door. With our gear recovered, we can fight back, but first we'll call Diane for some advice. I use RC missiles to play the Shotmaker fight safe for a consistent no damage takedown. A transmitter has been left in our belongings. We need to get rid of it. If we don't, as soon as we enter a room with guards, they will immediately enter alert phase and hunt us down. Pick up card 3 and then we'll fill out our ammo until we have 30 grenades for the grenade launcher. The submachine gun will also be at 100 bullets. The speedrun strat for Shotmaker is to run up to him and point blank fire the submachine gun for a 1 second kill, and it's great. It's possible to do that no damage, but it's extremely tight, and often I take a fraction of contact damage, which ended my no damage boss's goal. 
I decided to play it safer and root for extra remote controlled missiles. Here we have to navigate the basement, which is fortified with walls that have weakened sections that we can break with C4. Dogs will aggro upon entering any room that they're in, and they have a high chance of chasing Snake on the following screen. We'll use the submachine gun to take them out. They don't count as a kill for the big boss requirement. Sorry, doggos. This a bomb blast suit will allow us to navigate the rooftops. It is also featured in 2001's Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Laugh and grow fat, friends. This dog is chasing Snake to the ends of the earth. We have his answer right here. Fetch this, Fido. <clears throat> Just a note here to edit that out in post. With both suits, we can now make our way to the rooftop collect some RC missiles, and then head to the second floor. We will collect enough missiles for the next boss and for the late game panels that control the electric floors. Our higher rank allows us to carry more ammo for every weapon, which is why we couldn't stack up these missiles earlier. The wind just pushed us. The bomb blast suit allows us to get past that air current, but on the way back, why not let it give us a little boost to the elevator? These are the trickiest cameras in the game. We need to move with the camera as it passes the crates. The timing is quite fine. There are infrared lasers here that will trigger alert if we break them. They can be revealed by smoking cigarettes if you need to see the pattern, but they are static in this area. So if you know your way, you can just run through it without checking. We're closing in on Madnar's position, but before that we need to kill Machine Gun Kid. We'll bombard him with RC missiles. If you call Diane here, she actually picks up and recommends the same. There is no other tool to take out the kid without taking a little damage in the process, so RC missiles work best. The parachute the kid was protecting lets us leap into the courtyard from the rooftop. The trail is heating up.
take care as you cross the rickety bridge. In the room coming up, we take our first mandatory alert. Hug the top of the railing and pray not to get hit. Now we have to fight a high D. 20 grenade shots will take it out. And if you hug these boxes, it can't land a single shot from its heavy machine gun. GG! We're now going to equip the parachute and leap off the building in celebration. Not to get too cocky, as the hardest is yet to come. There are mines everywhere in the courtyard. We can avoid them by entering the vehicle from the side. If you get hit by two mines here, it's game over, so it's very important you don't mess up. Be careful not to re-enter the vehicle after leaving too, as it will reset the mines and you'll probably step on one on the way out. So, Madnar is in Building 2, and Building 2 is defended by the hardest boss of the game. It's about to go down. We need to fill up on 15 mines, being very careful not to alert the guard on the way out, which I did lose a run to, unfortunately. We'll also need to pick up some more C4 to break a wall later. Hug the outside of the base to avoid the hidden mines that litter the area. Taking too much damage at this point in the game risks game over, as the section coming up is a damage gauntlet. I'm moving left and right with each whistle to dodge the main cannon fire of the tank. If the main cannon lands a single hit, it will deal huge damage to take no chances. The tank cycles between right and left light machine gun fire, so we need to move to the safe side and take out the tank's tracks with mines, as we have nothing else to dent its armor. As Snake crosses to the safe side, the tank can fire a heavy shell, which can be avoided by keeping a little distance from the cannon as you move across. Take care with the light machine guns, as their range expands after two volleys, and they can catch you as you reposition. This is a fight of patience. Oh, and if you walk into the tank, you instantly die. So you have to be careful of that as well. And it's over. This fight can be skipped by using recovery frames, but for no rations and to save Dr. Magnar, we have to take it out. This next fight requires precision. Aim the launcher's target just underneath the armored bulldozer and fire six grenades. Then back up and fire the final two to take it out. Mess it up and snakes a pancake. Run right immediately to avoid the infrared laser, then continue right until you hug the wall before moving down into the next room. If you're too far left here, you'll walk into the direct sight of a guard, which is pretty brutal. Reset the room and stalk the next guard, and punch him when he reaches the edge of the dark water above. Then hug the railing, moving up with it, then to the door to avoid detection. This sequence is a little tricky.
count to three and then run to the elevator to avoid the infrared laser. It's an exact science. And now we're about to take our second mandatory alert. This is the damage gauntlet that kills big boss runs and makes no damage impossible. It's absolute chaos. So much damage was taken there. I was truly doubting whether we could make it through the gas rooms ahead. One more hit and it was over. And on review, Snake managed to navigate the fight as best as we possibly could. It's just, that gauntlet is a run killer. The poison gas in the next room will keep chipping away at our health so it's crucial to make sure the gas mask is equipped so we don't take any more damage than we have to. It's going to be very, very tight. Whatever you do, do not interact with that pretender. That is not Dr. Madnar. Speaking to him will kill the run. By the skin of our teeth, we made it out of the gas basement into the waiting arms of the fire trooper. We'll call Diane for advice. Wait for the trooper's flame to subside, then run in and blast them up close with a submachine gun. This next dodge is very tight, so it's best to practice the lines. Take a little long and you will be seen. Also, make sure you have card 5 equipped, because we're going to have to dodge the Arnolds that are coming up and they don't give us that much time. We need the card ready. Snake has reached the max rank, and now we're impressive enough to be able to talk to Jennifer, who the hostage mentions. Jennifer is awesome, as she opens up doors for us and also procures us a rocket launcher, which enables us to take out the Arnolds in the previous room. So, we'll give her a call. This looks tighter than it is. Hug the wall to avoid detection and punch the guard to pass him. If you try to run past, Snake will actually connect and alert him. We have our rocket launcher, but now we need ammo. From this point on, every point of health matters because we don't get to rank up anymore. So we're actually going to backtrack back to building one, 
There we can collect all the ammo and plastic explosives we need. And also while we're there, we can save Dr. Madnar's daughter, who without Dr. Madnar will not tell us how to destroy Metal Gear. Now, saving Dr. Madnar is usually skipped on a big boss run, and the ammo is obtained uh, in the basement of this building. But for no rations, and also to serve the story, I rooted it this way. We'll complete our mission to the fullest, while still achieving big boss rank. This is my favourite part of the run, as the box we picked up earlier comes into play. The only way to avoid detection leaving building 2 is to use this box, because entering a room with it equipped allows Snake to remain undetected so long as you don't move. This is the deception component of our free fundamentals of stealth. Speaking of deception, don't forget to wear the enemy uniform on the way out. I did lose a run to this. Keep to the right to avoid the minefield. The body armor can be collected earlier if you skip all the codex. My older route picked it up before the tank battle, but when I decided to include more codex calls, I could no longer fit in that detour, so I just collect it now. It will still come in very useful for what's ahead. Take care of the dogs. We really don't want to take any chip damage, as it will make the final run next to impossible. We are loading up on ammo, and making sure we have 20 plastic explosives for the final gauntlet. This is our last chance to pick up resources. Snake is going all out getting these rockets.
time to make our way back to Building 2, kill the Arnolds, and find Dr. Madnar. Arnold is the original name of the next mini-boss, in reference to Terminator. In this updated version of the game, they're actually called Bloody Brads. They're a cyborg super soldier created by Dr. Madnar, and they can only be taken out with the rocket launcher. It's best to juggle them, firing at the target that's retreated. Once they're down, collect the keycard, if not they will respawn, which is pretty terrible. I have to make the joke. They will be back. We will stumble our way to keycard 2, and soon call up Jennifer with a transceiver, so she can open a locked door for us. This allows us access to the compass, which is necessary for crossing the desert. Now we will finally free Dr. Magna and learn the secret to defeating Metal Gear. Your secret is safe with us, Madnar. It's time to destroy Metal Gear. Friends, I hope you wrote down the code. R-R-L-R-L-L-R-L-L-R-R-L. Easy. We just need to be patient in this section for the guards to let us through. Soon, we can take a sigh of relief as we come to the first and only save we make. It's worth bearing in mind that saves only checkpoint at elevators. I would like to run this no rations, no saves, but the next sequence is an RNG nightmare. This save was best suited for an offline recording, but in a live stream, who knows? We'll see. Honestly, it was difficult to achieve a no ration win even with this save insurance. This is where the gauntlet truly begins. Every moment has to land correctly. Wait for the guards to space out, then run to the door, and there's like an 80% chance you'll make it without getting shot. What we're about to do may look easier because this playthrough achieves the no ration win, but each room coming up can kill or run on its own, starting with that one. Use card 7, then equip the compass. If you don't, you will get lost in a desert filled with scorpions that will poison Snake if they land a sting. This poison will injure Snake until he dies. Since we don't collect the antidote, a single hit here is fatal. Okay, so things move fast here, but it's all crucial stuff. Position Snake slightly off-center, equip card 7 again. We need to make it so we can run straight on, 
straight for the door. We have to play C4 in the next room to break the wall while not killing any guards and dodging bullets they fire at us. This is the big boss run killer and it's even worse for no ration because take too much damage and it's over. I failed so many no save attempts here. All these runs lost like tears in the rain. And guess what? We have to do that gauntlet two more times. Thank you, Hideo Kojima. The oxygen cylinder will allow us to swim up the canal in building 2 and collect the final keycard of the game. One of the hellish elements about the gauntlet is you can't even reset the rooms as they trigger alert phases. Six alerts in total are taken during this endgame sequence. To beat this game with no rations, we can't afford to lose more than 20% of Snake's health. Any less than 80% and we might not make it past the game's final hurdle, the hurdle the game expects you to use a ration on. RC missiles are needed to take out the panels and turn off the electricity. The next boss has taken hostages who we have to protect during the ensuing gunfight, so we'll be using the precision of the rocket launcher. Leave and re-enter the room, fire two rockets, and Dirty Duck is left as a fine mist cloud. With Duck gone, we can free the hostages, including Jennifer's brother. With Card 8, we can at last reach the inner heart of Outer Heaven, where Metal Gear resides. One last time across the desert. Sometimes you have to move between screens until the way is clear. Take care as scorpions will jump at Snake. The bulletproof vests save the run here, reducing the damage by just a fraction. We are also extremely lucky that the final bullet didn't hit Snake on the way out. Entering the next room by hugging the right is important, as we don't want to activate the pitfall trap too early. 
Activate it too early and Snake can fall into it, or just as bad, become unable to pass it. Resetting this room forces another alert phase, killing the ability to achieve big boss rank. It really is on a knife edge. Wait a minute, you're telling me our commanding officer is the leader of Outer Heaven? Big Boss? What's happening? There is no way Big Boss is the Big Boss of Outer Heaven. Let's do as he says, it's time to abort the mission. But, Metal Gear, Kyle, Diane and Jennifer, the Resistance Fighters, we can't just stop here. Take these exact lines to avoid the mines that litter this area. Coming up is the reason we've had to keep our health high. Even still, if we don't run through the electric efficiently, Snake will die. Look at how high our health is. and it's still just enough. Remember Madnar's code, friends? We have enough C4 to make one mistake. The trick to remembering the code is that it always starts with R, and it mirrors itself. R R L R L L R L L R R L. The final hidden sequence is R L R R. And with that, Metal Gear is destroyed. Big Boss hits hard and fast. Any hit will kill us. We can only take him down with rockets. Snake keeps his resolve and sees the mission through. We'll follow Jennifer's brother's advice and take the left ladder to escape. And so concludes the very first Metal Gear. The rank screen is exclusive to later versions, and it will appear after the credits.
There we have it. Big boss rank achieved. 43 minutes and 37 seconds. That would be short without reading the codex. One save, no continues, no rations, no humans killed, which implies the bosses are superhuman, which is fitting. No bandana, eight alerts, all of which were mandatory. One awesome game wrapped up. It's not over yet, Snake. I just have some closing thoughts before I end the video. This is the first Metal Gear game. As such, it can be seen as the bedrock formula of what comes later. I've come to see it as the first gear rotation in a series that continuously plays on fundamental concepts laid out in this game's design. Elements are brand new here, but also in their infancy. And over time, these ideas develop into something greater, alongside Hideo Kojima's own proficiency as a creator and director. I really love this game, and the sequel is even better. It just seems to grow from strength to strength. So I will be playing later titles, the full series in time, seeking no damage strategies where it's possible. I hope you too will join me in later playthroughs, or perhaps even a live stream. Until then, friends, take care, stay safe, and thank you for watching.